New video has emerged tonight of Islamist militants with more Iraqi army prisoners. The footage came as the fundamentalist ISIS group captured another northern Iraqi city. ISIS, or the Islamic State of Iraq and Asham, aims to create a new caliphate, or strict Sunni Islamic state, spreading across Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan and Palestine. ISIS fighters seem to have halted their advance a few dozen miles from Baghdad. But both the United Nations and the U.S. Embassy are moving some staff away amid rising tensions in the capital. The rebels' latest victory came further north, where they claim to have taken Talafa, a town of 200,000 people, about 30 miles west of Mosul, which ISIS captured last week. The conflict has created thousands of refugees in Kurdish-controlled areas of the country like Kirkuk, where our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman went today, and Erbil, from where he joins us now. Jonathan. Well, we're seeing more images of torture sure. and the rest of it. What's happening? Well, John, in a very worrying indication of this worsening security situation, the UN has announced that it's relocating 58 members of its staff uh, from Baghdad to Jordan. At the same time, the UN's human rights body is saying that it has almost certainly found evidence of war crimes committed by ISIS militants. It says that uh, hundreds of people seem to have been executed in the last five days. Uh, the town of Tel Afar, as you said, up in the north of the country near the Syrian border, that appears to have fallen uh, to ISIS rebels. A UN source is telling us tonight that 3,000 families have fled from Tel Afar in the last 24 hours. And I must warn you that this report does contain distressing images. This is Iraqi Air Force video of helicopters attacking ISIS militants outside Tal Afar. But it was not enough to stop the city falling to jihadists overnight. A city official said families had been trapped in their houses by the fighting and many people were killed. And from ISIS, another shocking video of another apparent atrocity. Five Iraqi soldiers in all, seen pleading for their lives in the desert. A man identified as Jafar Zaki is ordered to swear allegiance to an Islamic state. When he refuses, the footage goes on to show that all the men are shot dead. God is great, I killed a Shiite, says the voice on the tape. We can't verify this appalling scene, nor these photos of an alleged mass execution of soldiers, which appeared on the internet yesterday. But as more volunteers flocked to Baghdad to enlist, an army spokesman said the photos were authentic. But 170 troops killed, he said, not the 1,700 that ISIS claimed. False news has been circulated about an exaggerated number of soldiers and volunteers killed by ISIS gangs. This news is baseless and Baghdad Military Operations Command has denied it. And in this escalating spiral of violence, hundreds of thousands are believed to have fled the fighting in the last week alone. The combination of reported atrocities by Islamic militants and government airstrikes is continuing to drive Iraqis from their homes. And with no sign of a new coalition government being formed in Baghdad, there's no political solution either to Iraq's widening sectarian divide. We headed into the city of Kirkuk, where Kurdish Peshmerga fighters have been battling ISIS on the outskirts. A school had been taken over by families fleeing from Tikrit, which fell to ISIS last week. The Musa family saw their local mosque badly damaged by fighting. It's not you we've come to hurt, the jihadists told them, but the Iraqi government. Mr. Musa seemed terrified by both sides. So I asked him if the time had come for separate states, with Sunni and Shia apart. <laughs> Yes, they're getting further apart because there are so many provocations. As there are no wise elders, everyone is inflaming the situation. The UN is expanding its operations here and planning for a humanitarian crisis, as evidence of atrocities continues to mount. Well, now, Jonathan, everything that these uh, criminals are perpetrating on behalf of what they call ISIS 
um, appears to be in violation of the Geneva Convention on Warfare and the rest of it. I mean, how widespread is it, or are we just seeing little pockets of it? I think that these videos that are appearing and these photographs are not coincidental. I think there is a mounting and deliberate campaign by ISIS militants to terrify uh, Sunni areas of this country and indeed to provoke uh, an armed response. And that has already happened. We're getting reports tonight that at least two dozen Shia volunteers, uh, some of those who've uh, joined up to irregular forces in the last few days, that they have been killed uh, by a bomb in the city, the holy Shia city of Samara. They were hiding in refrigerated uh, trucks and then their trucks were blown up and uh, then uh, they were shot. None of this is, is coincidental. What I find uh, perhaps the most graphic example of how polarizing and polarized this country is, that when I go to checkpoints where displaced people are, are fleeing from the fighting, I don't meet Sunni and Shia. I either meet one or the other. They are not fleeing in the same direction. They're trying to get as far apart from each other as, as they can. And as, as the refugee in my report from Tikrit said to me this afternoon, he just couldn't understand how Muslim was killing fellow Muslim uh, and how much blood was being spilt by branches of what is supposed to be or uh, believed to be by most Muslims, uh, different branches of the same faith.